Well, Jake, uh, that was uh, disappointing would be an understatement. Uh, to like, say the what, least. What is this, 2014, 2015 with the Colts just completely owning us and in every single phase of the game, uh, offense, defense, special teams, just a thorough beatdown. It's like it's a, all all in the second half, too. I mean, they outscored the Titans 21 to zip in the second half, and that's where it was all all lost and forgotten, Jake. Yep. Uh, you know, Colts get the win 34-17. Both teams move to 6-3, and three, with the Colts currently owning the tiebreaker on the AFC South. Um, man exposed again uh it's looking like last week jake uh, the defense it was more of a mirage or a uh chicago bears offensive issue than more so the defense getting better because uh man philip rivers picked us apart naheem hines was a matchup problem we m mentioned him he was going to be a threat uh, in our preview video uh so i don't know jake uh how you feeling right now what, what are your opening thoughts here about this i mean <laughs> We're There's just here. not we're much to Titans say game. about it. I've been, yeah. you know, it's I've not got gonna a be half a in the bag video. right now. We're recording this Thursday night real late. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a bad look. It's, I mean, okay, so, yes, the special teams gift the Colts 14 points. That's going to be the opening statement of this. Um, 14 free points off of the punt team alone. So and, you have the and Gostowski missed the field goal, so there's 17 points right there. There's your 17, 17 points difference. exactly. That makes up the difference in the end yeah. of the game. And this special teams continues to plague this team. I, Justin, I'm frankly not going to give the Titans a special teams advantage, period, from here on out for the rest of the year, you until we frankly see otherwise. I mean, Gostkowski needs to go. It's time. He has now missed what. Well, uh, eight field I don't goals. Even know. Eight field goals on the year. Thank you. It's got to lead the league. Yeah. Eight field goals has to be one of the worst kicking percentages in the league. I don't care who's holding. Uh, bad look for Vrabel switching punters after a great week from Ryan Allen last week. Uh, look, just looking great in the game, but oh, this guy looks great in practice. I saw your tweet after the game, Justin, that, you <laughs> yeah. know, what if what Logan kind of Woodside has a good week of practice? Might as well sit Tannehill at this yeah. point. What kind of an explanation is that? We saw the same thing happen with Greg Joseph as our kicker, who was flawless on extra points. The weird thing about we never uh, attempted a field goal when he was our kicker for some, well, just because we kept scoring touchdowns in the red zone or punting when we were out of field goal range. Uh, but we, he isn't re-signed and we go with Gostowski. And then here we see Ryan Allen coming into Stephen for Kern, having a great game, uh, punting over 50 yards uh, per punt, um, pinning it a couple inside the 20, uh, no mistakes. He did his job perfectly. Trevor, and then, yeah, the practice. What, so you saw something in practice, who cares? Here, the Allen Iverson practice, we're, we're talking about practice. Talk about the game, practice. The game is where everything matters. And if they're, you're getting results on the field uh, during those 60 minutes, I don't care what practice looks like, man. And Steve McNair's co-MVP year, I don't think he practiced a single time because he was hurt the entire second half of the season. Uh, but he went out there and balled. And so that's fine. Who cares? You don't need to practice as long as you go out there and play during game day. And it looks bad now that, yeah, Ryan Allen was, was benched for Trevor Daniel, who I saw someone tweeted that his 17-yard punt is the shortest punt in the NFL this season. Obviously, it has to be. 17 yards, dude. I can do better than that. He, he completely <laughs> threw the ball off his foot. What is happening? Trevor Daniel, he was delivering for FedEx. For FedEx before punting in this game. Uh, how, how does, what was he doing in practice? Did he bring uh, gifts and gold to the coaching staff? Did he bribe them? What is happening? I, I have no idea. And people are going to want to pin this one on the defense, Justin. I thought the defense played okay for the hand that they were dealt. I mean, yes, Phillip Rivers picked apart this team. Naheem Hines was a huge matchup problem all game. But you got to think, the Titans defense stops the Colts on fourth down twice inside of the 30-yard line. Uh, yep. One on fourth and goal. I mean, there, there's at least six points left on the field for the Colts. And if you want to count the fourth and goal – you know, probably 10 points left on the field for the Colts offense, but the Titans special teams continues to give points back to the other team. And I, that was my key to the game going into this one, Justin. You can't leave points on the field. Uh, and getting uh, getting yeah. a 17-yard punt 
is leaving points on the field and give and shanking a field goal is three points left on the board and then letting a blocked punt go for a touchdown is just it's terrible oh uh, just yeah. unbearable inexcusable i mean there's there's not much to say in this one justin they just they just got beat the titans had yeah. control of this game in the first half Things were uh, looking go good, yeah. Half, 17, 17, 13, 13, 13 yeah. and a half, and then they were blanked the rest of the the rest of the game on offense. And it's the, just... the offense stalled, yeah. Like even when the tie, the the best thing the defense did, I think, was getting those fourth down stops. I think that's their saving grace in in the game uh, tonight. But mm. when they got those stops, the offense wasn't helping them out. We had, I think, that was the turnaround where Tannehill got <clears> sacked, <throat> and there was an injury, and. Uh, something else happened and then we had to punt immediately three and out and so that just puts the defense in another bad situation after coming up with a clutch stop um but still it felt like the, the colts were kind of just dinking and dunking their way down the field at will at times and that's what rivers does and that's what their offense does it's not exciting it's not special it's boring to be honest but it's effective and the titans couldn't stop it going going up and down the field so uh, yeah, just frustrating, heartbreaking. Um, I mean, this team's got Baltimore next, and then we got to go to Indianapolis. I mean, we're realistically looking at six and five right in the face here, possibly on our way to another nine and seven season. Uh, like, you yeah, I had to say it. You I'm had sorry, to say it. I'm just, I'm down right now. I'm I'm down, and that's the kind of maybe the realistic uh, outlook right now. If like the Colts look like the better team, do you feel confident going up to Indy and and getting a win after what we looked like today? I can't say uh, I frankly, that. frankly, no. And, and you, you know, Justin, coming off the AFC championship appearance last year, you add Jadavion Clowney, you add Vic Beasley to try and bolster this pass rush. Obviously, that has been a failure thus far. Abs I mean, frankly, a failure. Now, I, I give credit where credit is due. Jadavion Clowney showed up early in this game. I thought he yeah, was yeah. making plays early in this game, being a factor, being in the backfield. Um, <clears throat> even making plays and run stopping, I thought Javion Clowney looked good or at least early in this game. But in the grand scheme of things, you, you bring on those two guys. I mean, Vic Beasley, we might as well not even mention at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, you bring in those two guys to try and get over the hump. You were a pass rush away from beating the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game last year. I mean, you're up 10 in that game, and, and your pass rush is kind of the reason that Patrick Mahomes is allowed to get back in that game. Right. Frankly, uh, you know, it's just a disappointing spot to be at, especially nine games into the year after you start 5-0, and losing three of the last four. Your pass rush is non-existent. Your defense is kind of not really there. Um, and, 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 yeah, as much as I did not want to manifest 9-7, and seven, we're looking at 9-7 and seven right in the face. I hate to tell you, man, it's just – I, I, it's I can frustrating see and 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 yeah. just just not not good. I mean, there were so many positives in the first half. I thought Tannehill looked sharp in the first half. Uh, good, the AJ Brown drop on the second possession of the game that would have been a touchdown. We've seen AJ Brown's run after yeah. catch uh, potential. Yeah. Uh, an AJ Brown drop in the first half. Tannehill put it right on him and just an inexcusable. I called it. I called AJ Brown elite last yeah. week on our recap oh, episode maybe and not now i am there i'm going back on that elite call not quite there just because we saw that drop that would have been huge the titans would have been up 14 to nothing early yeah. it looked like and and so just a we, huge huge missed opportunity so still, many missed opportunities in this game yeah i mean and, and everything that relates to the first half and missing opportunities in the first half the team still overcame the mistakes more or less because we were up 17 13 i thought we should have been up 17 10 that that last cold drive was very frustrating to watch happen yeah you get a sack on philip rivers somebody i mean yeah. you hate to see people lay on offensive players in that uh kind of scenario you always hate to see it when it's on your side but if i, I can't remember who came up with the sack but if they lay on philip rivers for literally one more second I know. You go into the half 17. I thought there was no way. I was like, that's it. That's the end of the half. And like, I, I can't, I couldn't believe he got that off. That was, that was ridiculous. Um, but still, uh, like we one. did have the lead at half, but then everything just kind of unraveled. Like, yeah, the AJ Brown drop was, was tough to see. And that, that just, that's more evidence of, I don't think we were as ready to play this game as the Colts were. I thought they were the more physical team. 
they were prepared. We got out schemed and out coached, and that's become a theme a lot of times, uh, in, at least in, in the Frank Reich, Mike Vrabel era. It feels like Vrabel's coming to the table with a better roster, but but Frank Reich always seems to be one step ahead with everything that they're doing. Oh, even in the game that we won last year, uh, when we got the blocked kick uh, field goal attempt return for a touchdown. I mean, that game was late in the in the game. I think it was the fourth quarter. The game was yep. tied at 17. They were looking to go up 20 to 17. So, I mean, we were getting uh, – I mean, yeah, we, we had our work cut out for us there in that game. And that, that was not a guarantee until that play really started shifting things in our direction. So, we kind of got lucky with that one. And then here again, I mean, we're just, just getting thoroughly – thoroughly outplayed it looked like rivers was in command the whole time uh of the offense and he just had had things figured it out and flowing and and at throwing our special teams gaps on top of that and they they run away with the game in the second half i mean yeah going into halftime philip rivers got 209 passing yards i mean it was it was apparent the whole game the titans when they did have success on offense, they were efficient. They drove down the field in a few amount of plays. I think there was a point in the game where the, the Indianapolis Colts were at 60 plays versus the Titans, yeah. 30 offensive plays. Yeah. And it, it, incredible. I mean, and, and I, I credit the Titans defense for showing resolve and getting those two fourth down stops deep in Titans territory. I mean, those it could have been potentially huge, but the special teams gaffes, as, as you said, just too much to overcome. The shaked punt was inexcusable, uh, especially uh, – we said it right before recording. You were saying it's, that's just a horrible look on Mike Rabel. You take somebody out who performs in, – in Ryan Allen, I'm, I'm mentioning. Yeah. You take somebody out who performs really, really well in the Chicago game for you, and because there's a great practice by this guy who's driving a goddamn FedEx truck, <laughs> uh, who knows how soon before this game – and, of course, he comes out and shanks one. I mean, I, I don't think the block to punt for a touchdown is on uh, on the right. punter there. I mean, it doesn't it, – it could have Kern out there punting on that one and that one. And the, the, yeah, the writing was on the wall because uh, uh, Ryan Allen had a couple of real close calls against Chicago. Uh, so yep. that's more of a protection issue than anything. And that didn't get corrected. It got worse over the past week. So whoever's practicing their, their, uh, their punt blocking uh, – assignments uh they shouldn't have been in this game because they had a terrible week of practice because that's what what we saw on the field or maybe they had a great week of practice and that's what Vrabel put them there and so that's why we saw terrible on field play because Vrabel I feel like has those things mixed up in his mind I'm not not it's, high on Vrabel right now I'm sorry I'm it's all just like letting loose and coming out right now all good and it, it, just a frustrating frustrating game I mean you have the AFC South kind of laid out on a platter for you in this game. You're at home in prime time. I mean, you have the lead going into half. Your offense is looking okay at this point going into the second half. And your special teams leave 17 points on the board uh, in the second half. And that's the difference in the game, frankly. I mean, the shank punt, you could say, isn't points left on the field. But if you give Phillip Rivers the ball on the 20-something yard line because of a shank punt, especially yeah. the way he was dinking and dunking down the field. That's seven Right, yeah, up. right after our defense came off the field after a how I don't know how many plays that previous drive was. It had to be 10 or more, I'm sure. It was uh, the so Colts. They, they needed a break, and so, yeah, they, they had to go right back out on the field, and, of course, they scored. The Colts' opening drive in the second half took them down to about seven minutes left in that third quarter. Titans' defense comes up huge with the goal line stop. I mean, the Titans did get an offensive first down there, gave the defense somewhat of a break, but then – kind of a six and out and punt scenario. Yeah. And the shank and then, oh, Jesus Christ, man. I, I don't even I, – I was talking about the fact that this Titans uh, team was in the AFC Championship last year. They're a pass rush away. I just – a talking point I want to get to, Justin, is this Titans team is not a contender. I, I As up. much as I hate to say it, nine games into the season, this defense kind of looks a little hapless. Uh, they do have some resolve, but this this team is not a contender, period. I mean, it's kind of the Chiefs and everybody else, kind of. Maybe the Chiefs and Pittsburgh and everybody else. I don't know. How do you feel about this team and kind of the playoff picture now that they're out of that AFC South lead and now that they're more in a wild card position nine games I mean, into the season? How yeah. do you feel looking forward? I feel like we're we may we'll probably make the playoffs as a wild card, but I could see us being a one and done team. 
I think we can still be dangerous with, with our offense. I mean, we saw how they caught fire uh, last year, and we were one of the most dangerous teams going into the playoffs last year. And we showed that we were uh, ripping off two big upsets. But, uh, yeah, it, you don't see that this year. I mean, we're, our, our offense has been handled more throughout the season than our last eight games or whatever it was last year. Um, and maybe we'll look back now – uh, at the start of the season, the, the first seven games starting out or five and one, starting out five and one, six and two. Uh, maybe we were just kind of still riding that hot AFC championship run and carrying it over into this season. And now teams are kind of starting to catch up to us. They, they started maybe figuring some things out. Um, I feel like our, our, yeah, the, everyone is able to move the ball in our defense except for Chicago. Uh, I, the, the biggest carryover has got to be the DNP's lack of presence there or a lack of a legitimate defensive coordinator too um that that keeps that continues to stand out and i i don't know if rebel's going to defend or think that not having a defensive coordinator is is what the big difference is a difference from last year's defense to this year's but i'm sure he's going to deny that it has anything to do with it um well uh, but to answer your question I, yeah, it's hard for me to see this team even taking the division at this point i mean we're tied for first place at six and three, but just with the way things are trending right now, um, it's not looking good. I, I would I would put us probably in the playoffs, maybe in that seventh spot, because I don't know that the Browns are going to make a push, the Raiders are going to make a push, the Dolphins are going to make a push, and there's three wild card, card teams this year. And so if we don't win the division, those are teams that we're going to have to keep an eye out for and to try to finish uh, with a better record then, which – I don't know. We can. We're six and three, man. We're six and three. And I think I saw on Twitter, Vinny, uh, Kenny Vaccaro was giving a, a press conference thing and had a quote that, you know, we're, we are in a much better position still now than when after uh, nine games last year, I guess not after nine games, we were four probably and five. five and four. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe four, four and, five and five. Or five and four. So uh, one or two games better. So yay for that. But we were trending up at last year at this time. And now it feels like at this Six and three mark now, we're trending down. We got two road games at Baltimore and Indianapolis. I mean, you look at you look on the paper right there, and the things look kind of bleak, to be honest. Um, I mean, the season, there's still plenty of football left to play. We can figure there's time to figure uh, things like this out. This is just kind of a kind of a down time for a Titans fan right now after seeing that game tonight. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, looking at the the I mean, I understand the Kenny Vaccaro window of view, and it's kind of the same point of view where, you know, going into the year, would you take six and three after nine weeks going into yeah. the year? And you probably say, hell yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And, but it's just, it, it's a more of a low point as a Titans fan, especially right now after starting five and oh, being looking so good early on I mean the defense did have problems but your offense was top five in the league at that point uh, they've kind of slipped down since then and kind of come back to earth yeah. but starting that five and oh and then now dropping three out of the last four losing this huge huge home divisional game to Indianapolis this could have been huge for the rest of the Titans season I mean, you're looking at maybe, you know, securing a playoff spot early December versus now you're probably going to have to fight to the end of the year. Um, you know, yeah. I, I just I, it, you can't blame Titans fans for being low right now. I mean, I, I, this, the, the overall feeling of this podcast is probably low and, and, and downtrodden. But we'll see. I mean, the Titans get the mini buy to kind of get healthy, kind of figure things out, get a little extra time to prepare for Baltimore. I still don't see them beating Baltimore, especially with the way teams have been able to move the ball in this defense, fourth down stops in the, you know, in their territory or not. And I, I agree with you, Justin. This team is looking at six and five right in the face unless something changes. Something's got to fundamentally change, and uh, we'll we'll see if Rabel's got got the will to do it. But who knows? You think man? you think J Rob? Uh, you think J Rob makes any cuts? You think he's probably not going to let Trevor Daniel punt another football? You think Ostowski gets cut? Special teams coach? Maybe anybody else on the defense? I don't know. No one on defense really particularly stood out. It's just more of a this collective, <laughs> just not being effective collectively. Yeah. 
I mean, I said it earlier, you can't really pin this one on the defense. They did their job. They did their job stopping the Colts on fourth down twice deep in the Titans' territory. It's on the special teams, the shanked punt, the blocked punt for a touchdown, and the missed field goal makes up your 17-point gap to end this game. And it, it, it's kind of that simple. And mm-hmm. I don't see any cuts coming on the defense. If Goskowski is not unemployed by Tuesday at, at the least, I don't see the the uh, – I, I, ideas behind that and keeping Goskowski at this point, he's got to be tops in the league and miss kicks and, and it's starting to really cost this Titans team down the road. I hate even watching extra points, Justin. Yeah. I hate, I hate any it's kind not, of special yeah. teams coming on this field. I hope uh, Trevor Daniel has a comfy seat in a FedEx delivering chair <laughs> come Tuesday as well. And he, he better get used to it because Ryan Allen's got to come back in. If not Brett Kern, I mean, he's on IR. I think that's three weeks minimum, but, yeah, good. Uh, good God! At least the cut of Trevor Daniel and the cut of Stephen Goskowski needs to happen, and it's long overdue. Uh, yeah. I know Trevor Daniel's only punted one game, but it seems long overdue at this point. <laughs> he wasn't. Yeah, if he's not cut right now at this very moment in time, it's overdue. It was overdue after his shank punt. Frankly, yep. I mean, you can't have that, dude. Yeah, you, know, you can't have a 17-yard punt and put your team in that position. Uh, I, oh yeah. Anyway. Um. Yeah. So, Much else to say, Justin? I mean, uh, uh, there is such a promising first half from the offense and the defense. I mean, the defense came out. It looked like kind of the Chicago drive early. They moved the ball a little bit, got the fourth down stop, a chance to go up 14 nothing. A.J. Brown drops the big pass. Uh, just, just a tough day overall. I mean, I thought Henry looked good. This is the second loss with Henry going over a hundred yards. That's something yeah. to note. Uh, two out of the last three that they've dropped, Henry's gone over a hundred yards and they've wasted that performance from him. I, I, I just don't had, know where to he, go. He could have had 150 maybe in this game if the game was within one possession for, yep. for the uh, entire second half instead of the Colts having a two possession lead, which really took Henry out of the game. I mean, if you want to stop shut down Derrick Henry, the best thing to do is to get a two-score lead on the Titans. So we can't we can't effectively use him. Um, yep. Yeah, dude, it's just it's frustrating. Like I said, we are six and three, but the thing about six and three is that if you break it down, we're one and three in the last four games. So yep. I mean, you can take the Pittsburgh Steelers are eight and zero. Oh, and if they go one and three and they're sitting at nine and three, that's a great record. But if you go on maybe one of their fan YouTube channels, they're going to be kind of down in the dumps because the team is looking like crap, putting up a one and three record for the past four games. So overall, sure, six and three is great. It's, it keeps us in contention, certainly for the playoffs or certainly for the division, definitely for the playoffs. Um, so we'll just see moving forward, man. It just sucks that this is a Thursday night. So we're going to have this loss hanging over us for the next 10 days. And then yep. we we get to play Baltimore like <laughs> bleakness bleakness of an outlook that's that's coming out of me right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't be no. more optimistic. I mean, you're telling me, man. I, this <laughs> I, I was dreading the, the getting on camera and talking about the Titans after the Pittsburgh loss. This was kind of the loss I was waiting for mm. to uh, kind of really dread coming on here and, and, and talking about it. And, and being kind of bleak and, and yeah, but this Titans team, the way it's ebbed and flowed the past, uh, you know, frankly, since Mike Vrabel took over, I wouldn't be surprised if we're all high and mighty and they beat Baltimore in 10 days. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be surprised if they, if they end up beating Baltimore and I would be ecstatic yeah. if they beat Baltimore, but I wouldn't be necessarily shocked to my core if Mike Vrabel, can get this team together with the mini buy and kind of do something to formulaically beat Baltimore. But with the special teams, it, it, it just comes down to the special teams being an absolute horror show every yeah. single time they touch the field. And it, it, it shows that you can't have that kind of play on one of the facets of the ball club and, 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 and win games. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. Special teams. And really, Special teams can be average. It can be average for a, a Super Bowl team, and that be that be enough. But if you're making mistakes, if you have a bad special teams, that can hold a team with Super Bowl aspirations all the way back. That and this special, special teams, teams can be the difference in winning and losing. Average. 
far yeah. from average. We no, talk about the third down defense making, you know, yeah. a million stops and being average. Okay, that's fine. But this special teams has got to be far from average this year. Yeah, not yeah, not even. It's got to be bottoms, bottoms across the board. At least in the field goal percentage and blocked kicks and you know, yeah, I, yeah. The, the special teams is is held us back for sure in this game, and they're going to continue to do so the rest of the season unless we can get Kern back and get a kicker back that can uh, that can make some field goals for us and people that can block on on, on punts. <laughs> And this, and that, and that. We have a lot of problems with special teams. Uh, God, I mean, the only silver lining here, Justin, is this team is six and three. You probably would have taken six and three at the beginning of the year. Uh, again, tied with the Colts, a chance to a, a chance back at them again in two weeks. That's the only kind of silver lining here. I mean, I do you have anything much more to talk about here? I mean, the Titans just got worked in the second half after a promising first half. Uh, anything really to kind of put a bow on this? I got nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, fair. I mean, we just got to right. stay optimistic at least. Yeah. I mean, if anything, in the Mike Vrabel era, this team has been able to handle adversity well, um, all, albeit with a 9-7 and seven record, which we're heading steadfast for a 9-7 uh, and seven record. We'll see, man. It's it's gonna it's gonna come down to winning games that they're supposed to win down the stretch. You know, the Detroit's right. of the schedule, the Houston Texans. You got the Jags again. Got the Browns down at the home. Who, who you got aren't the Browns at home? Who aren't the Browns of old? But I mean, they're they're gonna be. Well, the Browns beat this Colts team too at the same time. Yep. So that, that's gonna be a tough game. Who? What am I thinking? Um, but yeah, <laughs> no you doubt. gotta you gotta take those you gotta take those winnable games. The Lions. Jags, Texans is the last game of the season. But other than that, I mean, we're going to have to fight for, for a lot of these wins. Well, I mean, we're going to have to fight for those three wins, too. I mean, no, no win in the NFL is a gimme. Not with this yep. defense and special teams, anyway. Uh, we've lost to the Bengals. We can definitely lose to the Jags, Texans, or Lions as well. No so, doubt. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, six and three, that, that's, uh, that's our uh, bow on this episode i mean it's not seven and two where we want it to be but we're, we're this is still you know this this season is very much still alive up in the air for us and uh, we i mean we who knows yeah go ahead. sorry for, to fail. yeah still have hopes for for a postseason a postseason run but it does look like this team does not have what it takes to to uh, reach a super bowl at this point but you know i'm i'm all along for a little postseason ride and hopefully we uh address our issues in the offseason if it doesn't all come together I mean, uh, exactly. After week 10 last year, would you have say this team is going to make the AFC title game? Not at no. all. Yeah, uh, no definitely way. not. So uh, trying to keep optimistic. Yes, there is a, a kind of a murderous row, at least of the next two weeks in Baltimore and at Indy. But, you know, you never know. This team could reel off wins against Baltimore, wins against Indy, and we're here having a great time. So that's and then kind of the beauty. The and then, yeah, exactly. Go go and have a shitter against the, the Texans or the Jags, whoever is next. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, we'll just try and keep optimistic. That's the beauty of the NFL. You never know what you're going to get week in, week out. Uh, but true that, true that. All, all we know as Titans fans is this, this special teams unit is going to have to make some major changes. Gotzkowski's cut is going to have to come this week. I would not be surprised to see him cut tomorrow or sometime this weekend. Um, and just somebody else got to come in and God sakes, if a punter is averaging over 60, 50, 60 yards a punt, why on earth would you pull him? Bad look for Mike Vrabel, as we said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, but let's keep optimistic. Let's keep, uh, uh, trudging on, tighten up uh, anything to take us to Tighten the up system. y'all. Don't get down. It's just a football game. It's a game people. If you're down, just go outside. It's, it's beautiful fall time to enjoy the trees, go for a hike. To put yep. this game out of your mind. There, there's, there's bigger things to worry about here in 2020. Uh, but God, I hate the Colts. God, I'm <laughs> so sorry that that didn't happen. Isn't that uh, the quintessential <laughs> Titans performance against the Colts? I, I, I feel yeah. you, man. I feel you. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, but that, it's all good, man. Um, well, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time. We're still gonna be having our, our weekly picks video coming out this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll do a, a preview sometime next week. Get ready for the Baltimore Ravens. So, uh, goody. Get things back. Goody.
see, see if we can get things back on track uh, there. It's going to be hard. Hey, we did it last year in January. We can do it. We did it once in 2020. We'll do it again in 2020. Yes, I like it. I like there the morale. Go. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, <laughs> good, good thank dancing. you for watching. Sorry yes. for the downtrodden mood, but good God, as a Titans fan, how can you watch that and not be downtrodden right after the game? Justin, thanks for yeah. uh, soldiering through this one with me. Yeah, uh, Thanks, everybody else, for soldiering this one through me. Uh, any, any closing thoughts? That's it, guys. No, nope, that's the video. Tighten up. Don't get down. We still love our Titans even after – disappointing losses to the hated rival Colts. And I, this is really as low as it gets, uh, I think, on Titans too. Because anytime we lose to the Colts, that's just the worst feeling. It's the worst. Mm -hmm. And it's the hardest episodes to do. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this is the only time we'll have to do that this year. Yep. But, hey, uh, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm still feeling good. Still feeling good. Six and three. Uh, <laughs> tied for the division lead if you just don't even think about tonight and the Colts having the tiebreaker. We'll worry about that in two weeks when we get them in Indy. Uh, we'll see how this goes. The Colts have Green Bay next week. They're no slouch. Uh, we could be playing for the division lead again in two weeks. Yeah. So, so no Very worries true. there. Uh, let's, let's just keep optimistic and, and tighten up. Everybody have a great football weekend. And uh, good God, somebody fix the special teams. Good God. Yes. Amen. Y'all have a good one. Peace. Amen. Peace.